Hello everyone and welcome to the next installment of the Teaching the Curriculum Through Food video series. In this video, we're going to explore different ways to build food literacy activities without actually bringing food or tasting into the classroom. These ideas and concepts should be suitable for students from kindergarten to grade 8 and should be easily adaptable. We've used examples from our own programming, which you're welcome to borrow, steal, or adapt in any way. Food-themed activities don't actually need to use food to be successful. In fact, just talking about food positively and trying to expose students to a variety of new foods is valuable in building food literacy. So the first activities we'll talk about have a focus on food language, also using food reviews and food memories. These activities can be appropriate and adaptable for kindergarten up to grade 6 and potentially even further up to grade 8. The objective of these activities are to help children begin to think about tasting new foods in a constructive and positive way. These activities are meant to encourage a positive food attitude for children and consider the role that food plays in their lives and their memories or simply beyond fueling their bodies. The importance of how we use language when we're discussing food is incredibly important to children. So for this activity we're going to explore language and how we approach new foods. Possible curriculum connections could involve literacy and developing vocabulary, communication, writing, as well as sensory exploration. The food literacy connections can relate to food language, your self-efficacy and confidence, and developing positive food attitudes. In our experience, many students and grown-ups have never learned to taste food properly, which sounds funny to say, but it's true. Many people decide whether they like or don't like something before actually examining the qualities of that food. We encourage you to begin by creating a list of neutral descriptive words with your class, focusing on neutral adjectives such as crisp, salty, bitter, soft, sweet, crunchy, juicy, etc. Just stay away from words like yummy, delicious, gross, disgusting, tasty, all of which are personal preferences and don't actually say anything about the food itself. This is how we teach students to begin developing their palates, or as we often refer to it at Growing Chefs, learning to taste like a chef. By having students focused on the different characteristics of food, it can help children become more comfortable with different taste sensations by providing language for them to express themselves. In this activity, we're attempting to shift a child's focus when they are trying something new away from where it often naturally goes to, which is, will I like or dislike this experience, or will it be uncomfortable? to a place where they can hopefully approach the new food without feelings of anxiety. For kindergarten and primary age students, reading food-themed books can also be a great accompaniment to this activity. Two of our favorite books that we'd like to recommend for children of this age are Dragons Love Tacos by Adam Rubin. We love this book because of its use of language around foods throughout the book. And Tops and Bottoms by Janet Stevens, which we love because the plot is driven by the different ways that fruits and vegetables grow. Any of these exercises can be expanded upon by trying foods in class and writing collectively about the experience, which we'll explore a little more in the next video. For older students, you can build on and adapt the activity by asking students to visualize their favorite foods and write about a cherished memory involving food using adjectives from the list. You can develop it further by having them write a food review about an experience where they've tried new foods for the first time. You can also develop it further by having them draw a recipe. This activity is appropriate for children from primary all the way to intermediate students. Again, the objective is to help children think about tasting new foods in a constructive and positive way. And the activity is also meant to improve children's food attitudes and consider the role that food plays in their lives and memories beyond simply fueling their bodies. But it can also help to introduce food terminology used in recipes, which will help children to improve their understanding and familiarity of food language, which will also support their food skills and food knowledge. The more familiarized children become with food, the better. It can really make a difference when it does come time to taste and try new foods. Having students draw or create a visual version of a simple recipe like a comic or an illustrated story can be fun avenue to help students explore cooking methods in a way that doesn't involve food preparation in the classroom. For younger students, we recommend looking at the Molly Katzen cookbook series, including Salad People and Pretend Soup for inspiration. For older students, we recommend The Silver Spoon for Kids or Chop Sizzle Wow. For the next activities, we're going to recommend using math problems by scaling recipes and exploring unit conversions. This activity is recommended for junior to intermediate students and can help children apply basic math concepts to real-world situations. This activity can also help to familiarize students with ingredients, cooking techniques, 
and introduce food terminology. Knowing how to scale or adjust a recipe is just simple math, but we regularly observe in our programming that when students are asked to double or half a recipe, many fail to apply basic fraction, addition, and subtraction techniques to the activity. Using math in this way is out of context for many students. The activity can be as simple as having students adjust a recipe to create a larger or smaller yield. This could be extended to a tasting exercise by having students scale and then measure out a stir-fry sauce or a salad dressing vinaigrette and see if they scale the recipe correctly by tasting their finished product. Food budgeting and meal planning are two other areas that provide practical applications of simple math concepts while helping to increase food literacy in nutrition knowledge, nutrition language, food knowledge, and self-efficacy and confidence. At Growing Chefs, teaching food systems and understanding our place within them is at the core of all of our programming. Exploring the concept of food systems in the classroom is an incredibly important aspect of developing food literacy. Possible curriculum connections exist in literacy and science, but it's in social studies where food systems really align with the curriculum. From grade four to eight, students will begin exploring concepts such as issues and challenges associated with balancing human needs and wants and activities with environmental stewardship, global issues of political, social, economic, and or environmental importance, and the impact of human activities that change the physical environment. There are so many ways to explore food systems in the classroom without using food as an example. We're going to give some guiding questions just to get you started. For example, you could trace several ingredients through the food system, exploring their entire journey from farm to plate. You could ask questions such as, where is each ingredient grown? It's a good idea to use examples both that are grown locally and items that are produced in other parts of the world. And we can ask, how does it get from where it is grown to where we access it? What are the different roles that people play in each part of the food system? Has the ingredient or food been processed or transformed from where it was produced? And what types of food transformation occur for different ingredients? For example, wheat to flour, raw milk to cheese and yogurt, berries to jam, etc. Food production is one of the biggest ways humans impact climate change and affect the physical landscape of the earth. Students can research agricultural processes and practices that are used throughout the world and their impacts on the natural world. Students can explore how their own food choices positively and negatively impact the environment. Students can explore differences between local food systems and global food systems, as well as communities that rely on each of these. Remember to consider the diversity of food systems and how this might look different from region to region. Using the book Hungry Planet, What the World Eats by Peter Menzel as an example, you can explore what people from different parts of the world eat and what foods they have access to and how that shapes their lives. What role does food play in different cultural celebrations around the world? And you can explore some issues surrounding food waste, including the financial, social, and environmental impacts, as well as ideas for reducing food waste in the classroom, in the home, and at the municipal level. You could research local policies and programs aimed at reducing food waste and get involved and advocate for solutions and programs that reduced food waste at a municipal level. And finally, you can explore various food preservation techniques, how they were discovered and have evolved over time, as well as how they're still used today. Through this concept of food preservation and its history, we will explore a little more in our next video, where we start building on these activities by adding a tasting or food exploration component that actually brings food and tasting into the classroom. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video.